The following program, Live and Learn, is made possible by Aging Partners. Find out more on their website at agingpartners at lincoln.ne.gov. I'm Harlan Johnson. Welcome to the Live and Learn Show. And my segment today is about water safety. Laura Thomas, who's the program director for Josh the Otter, is going to tell us all about Josh the Otter program. Hello, I'm Tom White. Get out your calendars because Bob Esquivel, who is the Senior Centers Coordinator for Aging Partners, will be here to tell us about the different ways that we are going to be able to celebrate Older Americans Month. I'm Lita Powell-Drake and today with us, the Ollie Playhouse Community Players are going to be presenting the Radioactive Players with the wonderful show, A Fiddler on the Roof, Senior. Please stay with us. Hi, I'm Chris Beckenbach. My guest is Andy Stebbing, Lancaster County Treasurer. We're going to find out the best way to pay your property taxes, your car taxes, and your license renewals right here on Live and Learn. This and more on today's Live and Learn. Welcome to Live and Learn. I'm Harlan Johnson, and my segment today is a paradox. You know, it's a sad thing that happened, and out of that is a very positive thing that's happened. My guest is Laura Thomas. Now she's the director of Josh the Otter Foundation. And we're gonna talk about children learning to swim and becoming safe around the water. Laura, hey, welcome to the Live and Learn Show. And thank you for coming and being here today. Thank you for having me. Okay, now I know your main goal is to help children become educated about water. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, when did this tragic accident happen? It happened in June of 2008, right here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay, so eight years ago. Uh, now, Blake and Kathy uh, had this uh, uh, happen. Uh, tell us about their son, Josh, and a little bit about the family. Yes, and um, the Joshua Collingsworth Memorial Foundation is in honor of Joshua Collingsworth, who was a vibrant, beautiful two-year-old boy that they were having a family event at their home in South Lincoln. And as they were transitioning to dinner, Kathy, his mother, is a phenomenal cook and was busy getting food for everyone. And during that transition, everybody was helping all the little children get out of their life jackets, out of their wetsuits. And Joshua found that moment to go and fill a water gun. And that is when they immediately, um, shortly after realized he was not with them and they discovered him in the pool. Oh geez, as a parent, as a grandparent, and I know most parents out there, can really feel the emotion of that tragedy. So uh, we want to we want to try to counteract that and and do some things that uh, that that doesn't happen in a in a family today. Tell us about that. Yes, and one of the things that has been so profound with Blake and Kathy is they always say, "Let us not make tragedy necessary." to make people think and talk and discuss water safety. We don't want another family to experience what Blake or Kathy or their grandparents or their community has had to suffer at the loss of a child or an adult to a drowning. And so our whole effort, while it's fun and adorable and we use a very happy character, we really, our 100% goal is we want to prevent that pain from happening to another family. And it's 100% preventable, so it's possible. And that's what gives us hope. And that's a trauma that we would like to not have it happen in any family. Now, I know Josh and, and uh, Kathy are both members of Rotary Club, and they've done a lot of things of promoting Josh the Otter through Rotary down in Florida. How many states uh, is Josh the Otter program in? Yeah, Blake and Kathy, we're lucky enough to meet an incoming Rotary president in the Breakfast Rotary Club in Merritt Island, Florida in 2009 or 2010, I think it was 2009. And from that, Rotarians has helped distribute over 100,000 pieces of Josh the Otter material to children in nearly every state and internationally. Okay, so you're international and yeah. in Puerto Rico, uh, so great. 
Uh, now, uh, tell me, how is, it, how is the word spread? How do, you, how do you get the word out about Joshi Otter? And I think because water safety has become in our society kind of a silent killer that just happens in communities and people think they're disconnected. They don't understand that drowning is the number one cause of unintentional injury death for children one to four and the number two cause for children one to 14. And drowning follows every single stage of the life process where the numbers are just very large. And so this has been designed to be a grassroots, heartfelt nonprofit where it's through connections with you and with others and they understand this or they've experienced that tragedy or heard about it in their community. And Josh the Otter just has been spread where it's a simple way to talk about a very serious subject and to bring a very strong joy with it because Josh is fun. Josh brings a party and a grandparent, a parent, a teacher, a professional, you name it, what sector of society, they can open this book and read um, a simple message that is ensured to really start the conversation of preventing another drowning death. Well, now, I know our Rotary Club helped to sponsor the uh, community learning centers uh, after school programs, in other words, for uh, kiddos uh, to uh, become acquainted with and have experience in the water and learn the skills of being able to uh, survive, to float, and that sort of thing in the water. Now, how could an organization, uh, if they want, would like to sponsor uh, one of these programs in a school or a church or something, uh, what, what would they do to find out information? Well, they could give me a call Absolutely, because it's because we are adaptable and we are a grassroots organization, we get to hear what makes people passionate about water safety and we get to help them specifically design how Josh the Otter or our Float for Life programs can really do what they want to do. So it's just a conversation and that's how this, this small book, this small story has reached over a million children because people are caring and want to get involved. Well, it's, it, it, it's the kind of thing that you want to get involved with. Now, that number uh, that they could get a hold of you or Kathy, 402-730-3232. And uh, that'd be a good place to start. Uh, now, A, it costs money to <laughs> run a program like this. If you're off to Florida to get programs started there or going to Puerto Rico or going to Colorado or wherever. Uh, how do you, uh, how, how are you financed? Well, we have um, a, a beautiful special event that is our biggest fundraiser. We have a golf tournament in the fall and we have um, a benefit auction and dinner and program in May. Okay, now that's coming or, up. Or sorry, it's in April this year. Coming my up in April, April 30th, my birthday. Oh, <laughs> so it's extra hey, special. Hey, we can sing happy birthday to Laura. All right. Unintentional plug. <laughs> okay. Now that's, uh, where's that going to be? It's going to be at the Sesostra Shrine Center, right okay. down 77. Okay. Easy drive. And it's at 8th, or it's on April 30th, 30th, and cocktail hour starts at 5. So you got a speaker this year that really, uh, that, that's a, a plus right there. Yes, and he is the CPSC chairman, Elliot F.K., and we have met him through the nonprofit, the Drowning Prevention Conferences and the Water Safety World, and he is committed. He is one of the first um, people that we've seen from the government level that has this 100% commitment to drowning prevention. Okay, you rattled off some uh, uh, letters there. Yeah, CPS. Sorry. The Consumer Product Safety Commission. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, yeah. And uh, uh, there will be uh, a nice dinner. There will be auction items there. And each year I know I've uh, uh, put an auction item out there. Uh, and so if people would want more information, they could call that number and you say it this time. Yes, and this is Kathy's direct number. So she, I know she'll be happy to have phone calls, but it's 
3232 or you can go to our website at just joshtheotter.org and you will get more information about water safety and our events and our Otter Spotter Day and everything that we do at that website. Well now, uh, I've seen a, a somewhat likable character <laughs> to Josh <laughs> running around at some of these events. <laughs> will will uh, the Josh the Clown or, or the... Josh the Otter mascot. Mascot. There yes. we go. I got the word. Thank you. You got it. And that is this guy. Okay. And I have a 16-month-old, and he already loves staring at this picture. So I see the value Blake and Kathy have brought to connect little kids to a very important message because my 16-month-old opens a book and points right at Josh. So it's... It shows the power that, it, okay. that Josh well, has. But yes, he will be running around. We have 56 mascot suits running around oh, the country you? and in um, and in uh, the, all the way up in Alaska and in Canada. And there's a Josh the Otter in Australia. Oh, so okay. Josh hey. is, uh, you'll all see, right. more people will be seeing Josh over time. <laughs> now, I know Josh the Otter as an organization works with the Y, the Red Cross, the other agencies to try to promote water safety. Uh, is there anything you could tell us about that? Yeah, from one of the things that I think is the most honorable, I mean, Blake and Kathy, I've been working with them for five and a half years, and they are dedicated that this is an inclusive effort, that this is going to take every sector of society and so that's why we have amazing partners, no matter where they come from, what avenues, we are completely inclusive to, to working with each other to prevent childhood drowning. All right. Now, you've done a good job in marketing this. And uh, so uh, just glad to be a part of uh, some of that marketing and telling about Josh the Otter. And uh, you've been working with this for five years. It's been your life. Uh, thank you for very much for coming and being on the Live and Learn Show and talking about uh, how we can prevent drownings and water safety in young kiddos. So, Laura, thank you for being here. And remember, it's never too late for you to learn something about water safety. And remember, it's never too late to live and learn. Hello, I'm Tom White, and my guest today is Aging Partners' very own Senior Centers Coordinator, Bob Esquivel. And May is Older Americans Month, and Bob is here to fill us in on the events that are planned to help us celebrate. Welcome. Glad you're here, Bob. Happy to be here. All right, so I see that we're going to begin the festivities on May 6th with the blues. Absolutely. You know, Older Americans Month is a long-standing tradition with, uh, with Aging Partners. And uh, there's always a theme involved. And this year, the theme is Blaze the Trail. Now, we don't plan to catch anything on fire, but we do hope that we're going to be providing some programs that will get people started, maybe in looking into some new endeavors or new ventures for themselves. This May the 6th one you're talking about, that, of course, is the first Friday of the month. And for those of you that, that know that all the galleries have openings on that night, right. the Milestone Gallery, located at 1005 O Street in the downtown center, will be having an opening there for a show called The Blues. Now, why The Blues? Uh, many remember that uh, Pablo Picasso was known for his blue period mm -hmm. in the early 1900s, and there was all these paintings he made in sort of a palette of various colors of blues and blue-greens and all that. What we're doing is we're having artists over the age of 60 create color, uh, to create paintings and to create work in those same patterns. So they can paint anything they want, whether it's a, a portrait or a landscape or a, or a still life, but using that monochromatic kind of blue theme. And that okay. night, C.A. Waller, the, the blues player, will be providing the entertainment at that event. Oh, that's great. So that's going to start at uh, 6.30 in the evening and, uh, excuse me, 7 o'clock in the evening, 7 o'clock in the evening, and uh, go on until 9. And, uh, Come on out and see the, the the artwork. It'll be hung all month, but the big opening will be on May the sixth. I've always loved that the when the openings at the art openings at the gallery. They're yeah. beautiful. They're yeah. wonderful. So that's great. Uh, now, the event that's scheduled for May twenty fifth also sounds like a great time. Um, there's going to be 
T tell us more about the cruise adventure. Yes, uh, you know, people have been cooped up in their houses all winter long, so we've got a, a, our first uh, day trip set up for May the 25th, which is a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, the buses depart from the Northeast Senior Center up at 6310 Platte Avenue, and we're going to be going to the uh, riverfront area. And we're going to be taking a lunch cruise on the River City Star that will go up and down the, um, down the river there. And then when we get off of that, we're going to head into the old market area to a place called the Fairmont Building. And it was an old Fairmont dairy that was uh, recently renovated into an antique store, a place called Hollywood Candy, where they specialize in all kinds of, I guess I could call it nostalgic candies. Mm. All those things that you might remember from your childhood, like blackjack gum and things like that. Those, that, those dots on paper? The dots on paper, <laughs> all those kinds of things. They've got a, a malt shop there where you can stop in and you get a, a burger or, or, just, or have a, a soda, and a soda, what do you call it? A, a, phosphate, oh, wow. all those kinds of things. So anyway, it's, it's a really nice little place. We're going to spend some time there. And um, that, that trip, you can call us at 441-7158, as you can call for information on any of the things we're talking about just mm -hmm. now. And uh, sign up for that trip. You just have to be sure that you make your reservation and, and pay by May the 18th. And the trip, of course, is May 25th. Great. That, that's great. And so, so it starts, the riverboat cruise comes down for a few miles and then heads it, back. It turns around and comes back up and then drops us off for where they picked us up. Yeah. River boats are great. I love it. Uh, now, on May 26th, uh, we'll be having musical crabgrass. <laughs> musical crabgrass. Or, or maybe it's just music to watch the grass grow by. I don't know. It's something <laughs> along that line. No, we have a group uh, that night. Uh, that's our, that's our, our all center picnic. picnic. All center picnic. picnic. And Crabgrass is a very talented group who does bluegrass music oh, okay. and, and traditional, uh, traditional country as well. That's going to be happening at uh, Ald Pavilion, the historic Ald Pavilion there in Antelope Park. And um, uh, like you said, Thursday, May the 26th, you can sign up for that picnic uh, at your local senior center. If you're not necessarily yet connected to any center, you can call 441-7158 and we can sign you up for that picnic. And just but. adjacent to the Ald Center is also the Veterans Memorial you bet, Park, you bet. Right. So that at area, some okay. point there, after we've had lunch, you can, after the entertainment's over and we've had lunch, you can sort of explore the area. And it's a very beautiful part of that, of Antelope Park. Beautiful Memorial. I did a segment on that, and I love mm -hmm. that. That park is just amazing. You so. bet. It's great. <clears throat> so the picnic, and that's an annual event, so that's been yes, going on for a while. Mm -hmm. um, now, it also sounds like uh, you have a great finale planned for Older Americans Month on May 31st with a dance? May 31st, and uh, those of you who enjoy dancing, get your dancing shoes out, and get them all polished up, and head out to Ald Pavilion again, because that, of course, is the beauty. They have a wonderful big dance floor there. Mm -hmm. And a, a five-piece band called Skylark will be performing for that dance. And I better check my notes here and make sure I got the right time. Yes, indeed, seven o'clock to nine o'clock, and it's a free dance. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, there'll be a little jar there if you want to make a little donation, but uh, overall it's just a free dance and the group plays a wide variety of very danceable music and that they're, they're going to be along with us to help celebrate Older Americans Month then. Plenty to do. You bet. Plenty to you do. Bet. Now, now then, so those are all the event. those are the events that are for Older Americans Month and also every month the senior centers put on dinner and a show. Yeah, right? I want. I did want to kind of mention that. There, uh, and obviously, during the month of May, there will be a dinner and show featuring Johnny Ray Gomez that night. Mm -hmm. But the second Thursday of every month, from April through September, second Thursday of every month, mm -hmm. April through September, at the Cotner Center condominiums up at uh, North Co on North Cotner Street, just at Cotner and Holdridge, mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a dinner that's catered by High V and we have quality entertainment following the dinner. So we have a whole season planned of, uh, of uh, wonderful performers. Uh, Tom, you performed there last year. I did, it was fun. And, uh, so much fun. Did a kind of a Beatles retrospective I thing did. for us that went over yeah. very well. So anyway, we're, we're going after that again. As I said, on May the 13th, it's Johnny Ray Gomez, but oh, we've, got, Johnny Ray. we've got some other great Johnny. entertainers lined up for that. Um, the Lug Nuts, who are a, a fascinating, oh, yeah. fun group. I think you've probably seen them. It's, it's a ukulele Ukuleles, group, and right. they play music that maybe you would never expect to hear on a ukulele. So it's sort of a lot of talented musicians doing a lot of fun songs and a lot of comedy injected into it under the leadership of Bob DeShane, and they're going to be there in um, June, June the 9th. 
and then uh, as we move into the as we move into the season, uh, Lori McLean, a uh, folk singer who originally from Lincoln, who uh, home base is out of Nashville, Tennessee now, on July the 14th doing a show called Songs for Late Bloomers, oh, and uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. She always does a wonderful job. Light Up the Night on August the 11th featuring the Lightning Bugs who specialize in harmonies and, and instrumentation that they do from, from the Mills Brothers catalog. Oh, nice. Uh, and, and they're just very talented guys. They've been around the area for a while and they're always big favorites. So uh, we kind of did a little vote last year to see who they wanted to see again, who the audience wanted to see again, and the uh, Lightning the Bugs kind of topped that right. list. So we're happy to have them back. And then we're going to be doing a tribute to Louis Armstrong in, uh, on September the 8th. Featuring Tim, Tim Javorski, who's a very talented jazz musician, who does a mean Louis Armstrong, oh, and I, I, you'll want to see that because the music is great. He's a very talented guy. I, you know, I love these the dinners and the show, and the talent that you've had. And uh, I wanted to just put, point out that if you go back in our archives, a couple of years ago when we did uh, Lincoln Seniors Got Talent, the Lugnuts mm -hmm. were featured on there, so people right. can get a preview if they want. Right. Uh, in the archives on YouTube. Um, now then, one of the things that, that uh, since we still have a bit of time left, okay. can you please briefly, or tell us maybe for a while about, about uh, storytelling oh, of sure. the Dakota? Sure, uh, we're in, 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 co in coordination with uh, Humanities Nebraska at the Downtown Senior Center on May the 13th. We're doing a, a, a supper and the uh, the program for the evening is Joyzel Gingway. Uh, I break together this right. Joyzel Gingway. God, try saying that ten times. Joyzel Gingway Godfrey, and she's going to be talking about the storytelling history uh, of the Dakota people. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's a fascinating little produ uh, pro production she does, and and she brings in all all these great tales that uh, that were part of the oral tradition of, of the Dakota people. And so that'll be the program that night. Again, uh, done and presented in coordination with uh, Humanities in Nebraska. And you know, I wanted to mention because I don't want to forget, Butheris, Mazer, and Love help what? us with Butheris, Mazer, and Love help us with dinner and a show. And I always want to mention that because they've oh. been loyal supporters for like the last six years. So oh, I, that's great. I want to absolutely give them a, a little nod. That's great. Now, uh, just to go back briefly to the the art exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, so you're saying that these will be no matter what the subject matter they can the palette will be in blues and greens, mainly in blues, mm -hmm. that people will have. And how many artists are, do you, roughly, do you know? We, uh, I'm, I'm anticipating, and we've still, we're st I'm still waiting for some responses from some of the, the folks that, uh, that we've talked to, mm -hmm. but probably in the neighborhood of maybe 20 to 24 artists. Oh, that's be, great. All over the age of 60, the requirement, as you say, ha is that they have to follow that, that color scheme and that they have to display work that's been done after their 60th birthday. Oh, okay. You know, because we want to make sure that we give credit to our older artists who've been pursuing their talents for, for years and years. Sure, sure. Yeah, because in the past, those, those, those galleries have just been loaded with amazing, amazing talent. So, uh, and uh, I think that I, I also, as we covered, We've covered most of these things now. Um, is there anything else you want to say in general about the senior centers? Uh, well, I think that, um, you know, as, as blazing a new trail is a great theme for, for the year. And I think all of our centers, they're, they all vary a little bit, no matter, you know, it, because they're in different neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And they all have a certain thing to offer that kind of makes them distinct in those places. I would advise anybody who's over the age of 60 who uh, wants to participate in our meal program, not a, that's the only qualification. If you're over the age of 60, you can come to the Senior Center and for a suggested contribution of $4, you can have a delicious lunch. Just call those Senior Centers and, uh, and get, get acquainted with the managers there, find out what kinds of events they're having there. You can go online and get a, um, a, a copy of our My Center News that tells you what the events and what the menus are and all that for okay. each month. And those do change every month, and for sure, Check your Living, uh, Living Well magazine because in there, the April one, April, May, June issue there. will be coming out. All and all the things that I've just talked about will be listed there. So Fantastic. if I talk too fast and you couldn't write it down, <laughs> open up the magazine, you'll find out what you need. Well, thank you so much, Bob. And uh, I've been talking with Bob Esquivel, who is the Senior Center's Coordinator for Aging Partners. And I'm Tom White. And please remember that it's never too late to live and learn.
Welcome to Live and Learn. I'm Lita Powell Drake, and we have something very special for you today. We're going to be talking about Fiddler on the Roof. And Fiddler on the Roof started in 1964. It's been running all over the world for about 52 years, and it's back on Broadway now. But it's also on stage at the Lincoln Community Playhouse with the Ollie Radioactive Players, and we have with us today the director, Maury Enders, the executive director of the Lincoln Community Playhouse. Welcome to Live and Learn, Maury. Thank you, Lita. Now, why did you choose this particular Fiddler on the Roof senior? Because everybody in the cast is a senior. Why did you choose this? Well, I have to tell you that this has been the fourth time I've directed Fiddler on the Roof in my career, and it's a musical that I return to over and over again for several reasons. One, it is an incredibly beautiful blend of music, comedy, uh, drama, and sentiment, and uh, it touches all sorts of bases of the human heart. And so that's why I keep returning to it. And why we chose it for our, our senior production is that it is one of those great classic musicals that our people that are involved in our production love as well. And so we thought we wanted to do a show that they, that they already know and that they love and they wanted to share with the audience. And the music is more complicated than we realized because we hear those beautiful songs and, you know, sunrise, sunset, and if I were a rich man, so forth. But it's more complicated than one would think. Well, it's a Broadway score, yeah. and uh, what we're doing is, uh, there's one company called Music Theater International, and they have uh, taken some of their classic Broadway musicals and reduced them down to about 75 minutes. They marketed them as junior shows for the junior high market, and I called them up and said, can we do these shows for juniors for seniors instead? Use the same script, so it's a condensed version of the musical, because Fiddler on the Roof is pretty long, yeah. and this is this would be a much shorter version. It hits all the highlights, all the great songs, and it does it so that we can do it with our seniors and it is more complicated than some of the other things that you might see on the market but our group is up for it we've been in operation as you know for several years we started with a Jack Benny show with just a 30 minute little radio <laughs> play and we didn't know what would happen we were just in, in what we used to call the children's theater at the playhouse and and uh, we didn't know if anybody was even going to come because here's just a bunch of old people up on stage <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden the, the people poured in we had to put in extra chairs and we have to say wait you can't have too many chairs because the fire department doesn't allow that yeah. and we filled the house and said we're on to something. Yeah. There's seniors, not only seniors participating, but seniors watching. That's right. And also because of the way we do it with our senior target audience, we do some shows as matinees, so they're in the day, so it's easier for people to travel to the Playhouse to see them. And we went from that show, that radio show, to uh, musical reviews in our main stage. And then we actually were part of One Book, One Lincoln with the Lincoln Libraries and, and presented a dramatic reading of uh, Destiny of the Republic, yeah. which was the book President that year. President Garfield. Yep. That was an amazing production. Yep, yeah. and now we've gone to, to our elevated level here of producing these mini Broadway musicals. Well, it's really nice to have these scripts because they're short, the print is large, you can actually read it. <laughs> yep. And, and, and we work with um, our Karen Howland is our musical director, and so she is a great assistant in, to walk us through it. And we've got people who are really good singers and some that are kind of not so good. Well, as but the community theater, we, right. we, we always are using a, a mixed group of people. We have some people who literally could be professional actors, except at some point they decided they wanted to eat on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And then we also <laughs> have people who've never done it before, who said, well, I'd like to give it a try. We have people who cross it off their bucket list. They've always wanted to be in a play. They yes. come and do one, and then we never see them again. It's so exciting, though, for them to actually be up there, and their grandchildren come, and all their neighbors come, and it's really a fun event. Yeah, and I should mention, too, you mentioned the script and the, the size of the print yeah. and with our Ollie uh, Playhouse Radioactive Players shows we do them with the actors have their scripts in hand mm -hmm. so so if you're into if people are interested in being part of it they should know that you don't have to memorize the script what we, we call it rehearsed learned but not memorized and there are some people who you'll find that will take their script aside and do a, a solo number mm -hmm. but that script is always available for them and it's in costume so it's colorful and it's really lots of it fun. is in costume and we're even making it better Lita because we in their last shows we've done the cast has been on stage all the time and so it's been more like a concert staging mm -hmm. of these shows for Fiddler we're going to an advanced level here and it's going to be entrances and exits just like one of our regular plays on our season mm -hmm. and we've got 40 people who, who are participants and uh, you don't have to be a member of Ollie even though Ollie is the sponsor anybody age 50 and older 
can come and be in our plays at the Playhouse. This is the eighth production. Now, the, the themes, the basic themes, and what's represented by that wonderful music. What, sure. What do you think about well, that? Well, yeah, well, we've been rehearsing our opening number is called Tradition, and uh, it was a number that was added into the show specifically to set the storyline, the theme, and the theme is tradition. We have, we have this traditions of this Jewish village in Russia, and then the younger generation uh, breaks apart all of those traditions. And you know, Fiddler on the Roof is one of the most popular plays in Japan. I know, isn't that interesting? Right, and the, you know, the creators thought it would be a really heavy Jewish interest. Yeah. And there is, but there's interest in every culture that has an older generation that has set up traditions and expectations, and the younger generation comes forward and goes, no, no, we want to do things differently. Okay. And that's kind of an eternal theme of life, isn't it? Yes. Now we have to have uh, a little piece of music. Would you introduce our performers, Maureen? Sure. We're going to have Bruce Hahn, who's playing Tevya, and Sandy Van Pelt, who's playing Golda. Karen Holland, our music director, will be at the piano. And this is a lovely song called Do You Love Me? It's Tevya and Golda, who've been kind of at each other for the whole play. At one point, they realize all, these, all their, their daughters are getting married and falling in love, and they wonder whether they actually love each other after uh. all these years of marriage. Roll it. Golda, do you love me? Do I what? Do you love me? Do I love you? Well, for 25 years I've washed your clothes, cleaned your house, cooked your meals, given you children, milked the cow. After 25 years, why talk about love right now? Golda, the first time I met you was on our wedding day. I was scared. I was shy. I was nervous. So was I. But my father and my mother said we learned to love each other. And now I'm asking, Golda, do you love me? I'm your wife. Then you love me. I suppose I do. And I suppose I love you too. It, it doesn't, doesn't change, change a thing. thing but, but even so. After 25 years, it's nice to know. And if you'd like to see Fiddler on the Roof Senior, uh, there will be three performances, Wednesday, April the 13th at 2 o'clock, and Thursday, April the 14th at 2 and 7.30 p.m. Well, Maury Enders, our executive director of the Playhouse, has been awarded a couple of very prestigious awards. Can you share that with us, Maury? Sure. The Association of Not-for-Profit Executives uh, actually voted me, it's a local award, voted me as the uh, Nonprofit Executive of the Year. So I was very happy to accept that on behalf of everyone at the Playhouse, the staff, the board, the volunteers who create such a great atmosphere for the, the uh, theater in our community. But you got another award, a national award, too. Yes, and then the Playhouse also received a national award from the American Association of Community Theaters. I love this one. It's called the Twink. <laughs> it's the Twink Lynch uh, Organizational Award. Twink Lynch is actually one of the grand gurus of the um, American community theater movement. She's from Topeka, oh, Kansas. Oh, and yep. that's her real name? That's her real name. She lived all her life with Twink. <laughs> so she had to become a theater person, right? <laughs> yes. So and that award uh, was given to the Playhouse for... Uh, bringing the playoffs back to financial solvency and also for extending, extending and expanding our community outreach with all the programs that we do. Well, congratulations. You've really revitalized and reinvigorated the theater with all the productions that are being, and, and the wide variety. The children, the, the children. The children. <laughs> the, the children, are you, babe? Yep. <laughs> and we also have programming for children with special special needs. Yeah. We have outreach programming for Title I schools. We have our senior program. We, we, we are trying to be a stage for, for every, every age. age. And, and it's working. Thank you so well, very, thank you. very much. Now, don't forget, it's never too late to live and learn to become an Ollie radioactive player. You can do it.
Hi, I'm Chris Beckenbaugh, and I am privileged today to have Lancaster County's treasurer, Andy Stebbing, as my guest. Welcome, Andy. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. You bet. Well, today, I'd like you to share with us what is it the county treasurer's office is responsible for? It's a good question. Many people don't know. Uh, what we do is collect property taxes, about 120,000 homes or parcels. There's not always a home on e each parcel. It's oftentimes an empty lot. We collect the property taxes on those 120,000 parcels. We invest that money and then we give it to the county budget officer to distribute to schools, sheriff, jail, wh whoever needs it. Uh, we invest it in all of the local banks. It brings in about, property taxes, about $500 million a year. Okay. It's a moving target. The second uh, item that we do, responsibility and duty, is to collect uh, registration fees and titling fees on approximately 300,000 motor vehicles, cars, trucks, pickup trucks, motorcycles. We do that at three different DMV locations. That would bring in last year about $90 million. Okay. It's a big job uh, and we have a great staff conducting these transactions. So property taxes and cars. So property taxes and cars are what the treasurer is responsible for. Exactly, yes ma'am. We follow a, a number of statutes. Okay, and so cars, motor vehicles, uh, trailers, campers, all of those things, but not boats, right? We do the boats at our DMV okay. and then we work with the Game and Parks in the state of Nebraska on that. But okay, yes, we so do there's boats. another connection there. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right, so you're really responsible as a, a receiver of all of that money and then getting it where, where you're directed to send that money. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, and you mentioned parcels and, and so there's some agriculture land also involved in that? There is, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So it's all of Lancaster County? All, all of Lan Lincoln and Lancaster County. Okay. Great. So, uh, the Department of, of Motor Vehicles, let's start there. Um, what, where are those services located? Let's start with that. Uh, we, our main DMV to uh, conduct these transactions is at 46th and R here in Lincoln. Uh, we um, have a second location on West O, 500 West O, which is Sun Valley and West O Street. And then thirdly, we conduct uh, license plate renewals here at City Hall. Really? Mm -hmm. When I was when I was young, younger than, younger than I, it, it's been many years. <laughs> they used to do all of the DMV registrations at one time in the whole county, and I remember standing in line of what's now the Grand Manse used to be the Federal Building, for hours and hours and hours with my mom while she went in to renew her vehicle plates. Can you imagine doing it that way now? I mean. How many cars or vehicles a year did you say we go through? We're almost 300,000 cars and trucks and yeah, so we've done a little, many things. Now, uh, the county treasurers before me also have worked very hard on this, but we are still uh, trying to do the best. Um, so we have the three locations. We changed our hours at the main DMV. We were opening at 7.30 a.m. But when we got there to open up, there was always a line out into the parking lot. So we we're now opening at 7 a.m. at the main DMV. That catches about 25 people per day. Many of them will drop off their paperwork and pick up on the way home. Oh, wait, that's a new thing. You that's a new thing. You don't have to go in and stand in the, the little line. Right, right. Tell me that again. You can drop off. Okay, so at the main DMV, we open at 7 and close at 4.30. Downtown here in City Hall, and on West O, we're still 7.30 to 4.30. Okay. <clears throat> because people would come in and drop off on their way to work and then pick up on the way home, we then started a drop-off service. So at the main DMV, on the outside wall is a, a stainless steel drawer. You can fill out the form, leave a check, and slide it in there, and we will take care of it. We will text you, email, phone call, mail it, or pick it up on the way home. It's very successful. Ten, five to ten people per day use the drop-off service. So all this adds up to no more lines that you saw in the 70s mm. or the mm. 60s. That's <laughs> terrific. That's a really innovative idea. Um, is there, uh, are there, are there other ways? Okay, so if, if I've got a vehicle and I just can't get down to either of those locations, it comes in the mail, my notification, mm -hmm. um, 
and I bought a car in July and I bought a car in April and I just want to do that all at once. Is that a possibility? It is. You can call in and we can bundle those together so we only bother you once a year for two or three or four uh, vehicles or okay. whatever. So that works out and I would like to um, give that phone number if I could. If someone would like to bundle the registrations together mm -hmm. uh, so we can take care of it only once per year, that is 402 441 seven. Four nine seven. That's okay. to bundle those together. Someone will answer and work on that with you. Uh, and, and this brings up another point that I think you're getting at. We now can do renewals over the phone. So if you have your registration, your insurance card, maybe a credit card or a debit card, we'll be happy to answer the phone and do that over the phone with you. We'll put it in the mail the next day. That renewal phone number is 402-441-8994. Great. More ways that people don't have to come in and gamble if there's a line or not, or, or take uh, time out of their busy day. So the hours, uh, the mail, the three locations, the phone, the drop off, all this is adding up to uh, m more, more quicker, easier for the uh, citizen. And let's say I'm helping uh, a senior friend, uh, particularly in the property tax area, and uh, and I'm, and I'm just gonna handle that on, on their behalf. How would I access the treasurer's office to do that for them, Andy? Mo most people mail it in. Uh, we can do it over the phone. We can do it in person here at City Hall. You can drop it off at the steel boxes that we have at the DMV locations. Um, you can do it online. Uh, so we are trying to be as ready as we can to accept property taxes like we are the cars as well. Um, all three locations are ADA uh, um, compliant. Okay, tell me what that means. That um, means. American Disabilities Act, we want to be very user friendly for anyone with a disability. Wheelchair, crutches, elderly, walkers, whatever it is, we want to be there for you. So mm -hmm. uh, at all three locations, you will see it easy, um, close parking. Um, at the West O uh, location, we are going to install a fourth window starting next month where it would be the level of somebody in a wheelchair. But if you are in a wheelchair, you are handicapped, disabled in any way, we are, uh, we are f friendly enough, user friendly enough that someone will be right there to help you. Oh, that's terrific. It, paying taxes is painful enough, and so if we can just make it easier and quicker and better, that's what I want, uh, and, and I think the citizens do too. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. on, on behalf of our viewers and everybody, um, making it as accessible for people. So online, uh, is there a website we can go to? Um, if you go to my county treasurer's website, we will direct you that right there. There's a main tab, click there. But the, that, the online transactions go through the state of Nebraska. Okay. And we work closely with them. And that is www.clickdmv.ne.gov. Go to my website and we'll take you there or go to that website. Okay, and what is the county treasurer's website, Andy? That is www.lancaster.ne.gov forward slash treasure, but if you forget the treasure part, you'll find it easy enough. Okay, okay. So let's go over this one more time. Either vehicle taxes or property taxes, you can pay them in person. Go in, write a check, just like you always have. Mm -hmm. You can do them online. Mm -hmm. And is there a processing fee to use a card to use that online service? Yes. Now, um, people often think, well, the treasurer's making money on us. No, the, the processing fee online or in person for a credit card or debit card is 2.45%. So um, that goes to the credit card company. Okay. It's a little bit higher online through the state DMV. We have it a little bit lower, 245 in person. Um, so um, that goes right to the processing company and to the credit card. And uh, So if you're going to pay sales tax like on a new vehicle or some larger purchase, it is maybe dig out that checkbook and save that, that 2% to almost 3%, right? Yes, absolutely. If, okay. you're, if your fee is going to be about $100 for a renewal, you know, sure, $2 or whatever. But yeah, uh, you buy a new Ford truck. Uh, you might not want to use the credit or debit card, absolutely. Sure, yeah. okay, so I could mail that in with a check. Yes. I can phone in and we'll have those phone numbers available again. Uh, I can do it online mm -hmm. or I can do it in person with a card or a check. Yes, you can drop off. I can drop off? Yes, uh, and um, that, that, that summarizes uh, yeah, are the changes that we're, we, we've undertaken 
in the last few years, yeah. That's terrific. Let's go over those fund numbers again. If I want to bundle my renewals. Bundling renewals is 402-441-7497. Okay. To phone in and renew, 402-441-8994. Uh, 7 a.m. at the main DMV, still 7.30 at the other two. Okay. And I just want to add that we renew here a lot of times, and I appreciate Channel 5, the city of Lincoln, uh, doing this because we've been renewing down here for years, and it's always a process of getting the word out. Uh, a guy just left the office. He, he said, I had no idea you could renew here. Mm -hmm. uh, so many people use the city hall, and we're happy to, to do your renewing right here at, at, at city hall. So, um, yeah, and uh, we're here to help in any way we can. I really appreciate your willingness and your staff's availability to help seniors and those who might have excess abilities, and uh, that's much appreciated. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. It is. Thank you. And we want to thank you for your time today and uh, being on Live and Learn and sharing with our audience. Thank you for Live and Learn, and thank you for Channel 5 uh, and, and this, this, this way of getting the word out. Yeah, I appreciate it so much. And remember, it's never too late to live and learn.